In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install GNS3 on a Mac. The first thing you need to do is go to gns3.com and then click on the free download button. An account is required to download GNS3. So either log in with your account or sign up for a new account. GNS3 is open source free software. So there's no charge to download GNS3, but you do need to create an account to download the software. So either log in with your GNS3 account or sign up for a new free account. In this case, I already have a GNS3 account, so I'm gonna click the login and continue button. The three supported operating systems are shown. In this case, we're going to download GNS3 for Mac. The software is downloaded and I can click on the download to start the install process. You then need to drag the GNS3 icon to the applications folder. Double click on the applications folder to view installed applications, and then double click on GNS3 to start the application. Now in this example, my Mac is telling me that it can't open the application because it's from an unidentified developer. GNS3 is not available from the Apple App Store and I downloaded it directly from gns3.com and my Mac is telling me that the application can't be opened. So I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna right click on the application and click Open. I'm warned that the application has been downloaded from an unidentified developer, but in this case, I do wanna open the application. So I'm gonna click Open. When GNS3 initially starts, you're prompted that uBridge requires root permissions to interact with network interfaces. Do you wanna set permissions? And here you need to click yes. You then need to enter your root password and you'll need to do that twice. And once that's done, the GNS3 setup wizard starts and we can specify whether we wanna use a local GNS3 VM or a local server. Now, the GNS3 VM is strongly recommended on Windows and Mac OS, so we're going to use the GNS3 VM, and for that, I'm gonna use VMware Fusion. You can download VMware Fusion for Mac from the VMware website, and in this video, I'm assuming that you've already downloaded VMware Fusion and got it running on your Mac. So back on the GNS3 website, we previously downloaded the Mac GUI or Mac client for GNS3. But what we need to do now is download the GNS3 VM. The GNS3 VM is available on GitHub. You need to download the right version of the GNS3 VM for the GNS3 client that you're using. In my example, I'm using version 1.5.2 of GNS3. You can see the version that you're using by clicking on GNS3, about GNS3 on the GNS3 menu. So in my example, I need to download the GNS3 VM for VMware Workstation. The VM is about 419 meg in size. Once the zip file is downloaded, extract the file. So as an example, here's the GNS3 VM OVF. In VMware Fusion, select File, New, and then click Import an Existing Virtual Machine. Select Choose File, and navigate to the folder where the GNS3 VM is. Select the GNS3 VM OVF file and click Open, and then click Continue. Import the GNS3 VM as a GNS3 VM and click Save. The GNS3 VM is imported into VMware Fusion. Once it's imported, click Finish. So in this example, my GNS3 VM is imported into VMware Fusion. I can now go back to the GNS3 client or GNS3 GUI and select Local GNS3 VM and click Next. Now the virtualization software that I'm using is VMware. In other words, VMware Fusion, which is the recommended virtualization software. 
You can also use VirtualBox, but it doesn't support nested virtualization, which means that running some of the QMU-based VMs will be very slow. So it's recommended that you use VMware Fusion. The GNS3 client has picked up that I've imported the GNS3 VM into VMware Fusion. Select the number of virtual CPU cores and amount of RAM that you want to allocate to the GNS3 VM. This will be dependent on what's available on your machine. And then click Next. The GNS3 VM is started automatically by the GNS3 client. And as you can see here, it's booted up. And now the GNS3 client wants to know which virtual machines we're going to add to the GNS3 VM. So we could add a iOS router using a real iOS image, or we could add various other options. So I'm gonna select a real Cisco iOS image and click Finish. A new wizard displays and we need to select the server type. And in this example, we're going to run the iOS on the GNS3 VM. So I'm gonna select Next. We need to choose the iOS image that we're gonna use. So browse to where your iOS image is stored and click open. Decompressing an image will allow the image to boot quicker. So I'm gonna select yes for decompressing the image. So click next. You need to name your router. So I'm gonna call this C3725 hyphen VM. The router platform is a 3725, click Next. Now it's a good idea to check the minimum and maximum RAM requirements for your router image on the Cisco website by clicking this link. Check for minimum and maximum RAM requirements. That link takes you to the Cisco Feature Navigator and you'll be able to check how much RAM is required for your image. In my example, I already know that this image requires 256 meg of RAM. So I'm gonna change that and click Next. You then need to specify the network adapters that you're gonna put into your router. The slots available are router dependent. So I'm gonna select these modules and click Next. Because I selected an NM4T, I can add WIC interfaces to the router so I'm gonna add two and click next. An idle PC value is necessary to prevent the iOS using 100% of your processor or one of its cores. In this example, GNS3 has found an idle PC value that should be used. If it's not found automatically, click the idle PC finder button to find a relevant idle PC value. But in this case, I'm gonna click finish. A summary of the ride is displayed, and I'm gonna click OK to complete the wizard. So that's how you download and configure GNS3. What we can do now is create our first GNS3 topology. So I'm gonna drag two routers to the workspace. I'll zoom in to make it easier to see. What I'll also do is add a link using the fast ethernet interfaces between those two routers and I'll click Show Hide Interface Labels to show us the interface labels. So here's a very simple GNS3 topology. I'll start up both routers, and then I'll open up a console to both routers. My routers have booted up. I can press Enter to get started. So here's router one, and here's router two. On the first router, I'll go onto the fast ethernet interface and I'll shut it and configure the router with an IP address and do something similar on the second router. Give it an IP address. And what I should be able to do now is ping the first router from the second router, and I can. What I could do as an example is configure a loopback address on the second router, and then do something similar on the first router. 
and then enable a routing protocol like OSPF. And then do something similar on the second router. So enable OSPF on all interfaces. And what should happen after a while is the routing table of the router will be updated once the neighbor relationships are established between these two routers. So the neighbor relationship is two-way at the moment. It's gone to X start. And after a while, what we should see is that the neighbor relationship goes to full. So it's just gone to full. Notice the relationship is full. Loading is done. So now show IP route. Router one has router two's loopback in the routing table and router one can ping the loopback of router two. And something similar can be seen on router two. The loopback of router one is displayed and the router can ping the loopback of router one. We could visually show that by adding a label to the topology and then doing something similar here. And if you wanted to, you could add the IP addresses to your network to make it easier to read. But that's an example of downloading GNS3, installing it on a Mac, and integrating the GNS3 VM, and uploading an iOS to the GNS3 VM and configuring and testing a basic GNS3 network.